Hi again, it's Chrissy for part two of this anger management condensed. So we talked about the ABC method in the earlier um, video, the action, belief, behavior, and the consequence, and we're gonna come back to that in a moment. But the slide I wanna introduce right now is talks about why do we get angry? So anger actually, some people get a charge off of being angry, they get a, a momentary high. Um, we have a, basically a, um, a brain that has not fully developed to normal society. Um, I'll tell a little bit of a personal story just in a moment. But anger is a reaction or a response to a real or a perceived threat. So sometimes we um, actually will have a, a stress response and an anger response to something that may just be a perception and not something in reality. So let me tell you a little bit of a personal story. Um, I have three children, but after I had my first son, I was feeling pretty overwhelmed. I was at home full time. Um, my spouse was busy at work. Um, and I remember having one of those uh, holiday weekends come up where I thought that he was probably going to get a 96. I thought he was going to be coming home on Thursday afternoon and then he wouldn't go back until Tuesday. And I was really excited because I thought that that meant that I could get some time to myself. So Friday rolls around and I'm thinking like he's going to come home at like 11 or 12 or something like that, right? So I have one of those um, apps on my phone. It's called Find Friends. I, I don't know if they still have it now, but I had one of those because uh, I would sometimes check to see if he was on his way home. And that was a arrangement that we had in our relationship that we were okay sharing our location with each other. Uh, so I checked it at around 11 o'clock, which is around the time my son went to, um, to have lunch. And I was like, oh, great. And it showed his little pin in our detached garage. I was like, okay, so he just got home. Um, he'll be in the house like 10, 15 minutes or something like that. So yay, we can, uh, can get on with our weekend. Uh, so time passes like half an hour and I look and the pen is still in the garage. I'm like, where is he? What's he doing? So I let more time passes at this point. It's like an hour afterwards. And then it dawns on me. I'm like, oh, our neighbor has that like bar in his garage and it's a holiday weekend. So I bet he got home and all the boys were having a beer after work and he's just over there having a good time. I was like, okay, well... I'm not gonna bother him, but I wish he would have come inside and helped me out. So more time passes. So first I was like worried and then I was like getting kind of annoyed and now it's like flipping into anger. I'm getting angry, right? I'm thinking I'm here all the time doing everything. He's not helping me out at all. Um, he's over there having a great old time. I can never do stuff like that because I have a kid now. And so my thought pattern was just like rolling and rolling and rolling. So around four o'clock, so I've been stewing for a while, like that's a pretty nice pot of stew that I have going. I am, he rolls in the house in the back door and I am locked and loaded. I'm like, tsh, 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 let's go. And he comes in and I say, how was your day today? And he says, really busy. I'm like, oh yeah? And then he looks over at our Bose speaker, which was in our kitchen, one of the ones you can pop your phone onto, and he goes, there's my cell phone and goes over and grabs it. That pin in the garage was showing that his phone was at the house all day. So I had a whole perceived storyline that had nothing to do with what actually happened. Do you think that this happens on deployment with spouses back at home and people getting the port pictures and you hearing about them talking it to someone that you don't know very well? This happens all the time. All right, so think about it. Is it actually happening the way you think it is? Or are you, are you reacting to a perceived threat? And the, really the only way you can find out is through calm and effective communication with you and your significant other. All right, so take that into account as well. See if that applies to you at all. All right, so you know that you can know that Anger is a problem, again, when you have to make frequent apologies for it, when it's affecting your work life, your performance, or your relationships. But some of the other things that you might want to check is if you have any of these warning signs. Your anger is very intense, it's frequent, it's daily, um, hourly, uh, multiple times a day. Its duration is very long, I feel angry for a long time or I have aggressive thoughts, okay? So that's something you need to watch out for and reach out to Fleet and Family. I can't cover all of the techniques that we will use 
in this brief, okay? So again, I said in the last brief that anger is a secondary emotion. Sometimes we might be angry because we are very stressed, but there can also be other emotions associated with that. So I might actually have feelings of sadness that display as anger. I might have feelings of isolation that display as anger. I might have feelings of disappointment in myself, in who I am, and I might take that out on people who love me who are trying to get close to me. Um, and I can't unpack all of that for everyone else, but just realize that anger is second to the root emotion, okay? All right, now, people who, um, by the way, who are better at staying in the green and managing their stress don't experience anger as intensely, as frequently, and for a longer period of time as people who are better at managing their stress, okay? So refer to your handy operational stress continuum. If you're living in the green, if you're better at managing and taking regular coping mechanisms to pull yourself into the green, you're not going to experience anger at as high a rate as people who live in the yellow and the orange. This is your area of responsibility. Here you cannot buy for yourself anymore in the red. Yellow and orange, if you find yourself here, it's your responsibility to reach out, get resources, and pull yourself back into the green zone. Okay? Now, you can have stress symptoms that are physical, like gritting your teeth, tenseness in your shoulders, stomach pains. Um, you can also have mental uh, symptoms. And this could be even um, as unusual as loneliness or cynicism or apathy, like I'm just not interested in life anymore. Um, it could be even so, so far as uh, stress symptoms like I look for magic, like, um, like if I just win the lottery, all my problems will go away because I'll have enough money to deal with everything. That's kind of a, a stress symptom because you're looking for magic um, ways and you're not thinking probably as clearly as, as as you should. There are emotional stress symptoms. Anger is obviously an emotional stress symptom. But there's other ones like crying, um, lashing out, being withdrawn, stonewalling, not talking to people, spiritual symptoms, losing your sense of purpose. Doesn't always mean that you have to have a um, religious affiliation, but it can just mean that you don't understand where you fit in in the world. And then having relationship and social symptoms. That is a part of stress as well. Um, I think anger management and stress management kind of go hand in hand. So I would almost show those videos in conjunction with each other. But then I would encourage you as well to check out some additional resources on mindfulness and meditation, like the Mindfulness Coach. This is a free app through the VA. Um, this tile here, if you download this app, this is the logo you're looking for. If you just put in Mindfulness Coach, it'll pop up. Um, this can walk you through mindfulness training talk to you about mental toughness, how this can help you deal with um, symptoms of anxiety and depression. Um, people who are mentally strong, who handle stress really well, have some form of mindfulness built in to their, um, to their daily schedule and into their life structure. So if I frequently reach out to friends, that's a form of mindfulness, being mindful and present in that moment when I'm with friends. If I um, have hobbies that I enjoy, like music or sporting activities, um, if I do things like get quality sleep or I sit down and have a meal from beginning to end and I don't have other distractions, those are ways that we can bring ourselves into a more mindful state and that allows our brain to heal, okay? The body and the mind can only heal when they're in a state of rest. For most of us, we don't get enough rest. You need eight hours a day to properly function. Um, and when you meditate and bring yourself in a mindful state, it allows your mind to heal, okay? People who are regular meditators can get the benefits of sleep three times over during a meditation session. And this is the Military Meditation Coach Podcast if you wanna learn more about meditation. Uh, so if I go back to... Um, Basically what we're trying to do with mindfulness and meditation is we're trying to interrupt the action behavior consequence so that you respond wisely, 
rather than react blindly. We're trying to interrupt the process of that behavior and belief that happens so that we have the consequence and the outcome we wanted. It's like my father used to say about arguing, um, and he was good at it, by the way. Um, if you won an argument, he would be like, okay, well you won, so what? Was that the outcome you wanted? You still didn't get the car for the weekend like you wanted, so you won the argument, but still not gonna get the car. So think about this too, like particularly with your relationships. It doesn't mean you bend and you uh, get everything you want, but if you just go into an argument because you like the thrill of winning, I don't think it's gonna help your relationship. That's just think, something to think about too. So know that when you go into it. So mindfulness and meditation will help you respond wisely in the way you want to rather than react blindly. And that's very important for anger management. All right, I think that's all I can fit in for today. Reach out to us for anything else you have. We're thinking about you and we look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Bye.